Okay, thanks, Joy. Um, so yeah, today it's my pleasure to talk a little bit about home energy efficiency. So I think a lot of times when we think about what can we do about global warming, we immediately go to things like solar panels and windmills. And I'm definitely a huge proponent of that. In uh, about 40 minutes, I will be talking about solar panels for your home. But before you even get to that point, it's important to think about the energy that you don't use. So although solar panels and wind turbines can make pretty clean energy compared to fossil fuels, nothing is cleaner than not using that energy in the first place. And you can reduce your home's energy consumption by a bunch of steps that are pretty easy and inexpensive. So that's the purpose of this talk uh, in the next 15 or so minutes. So if we think about what are the different ways that our homes use energy and thereby contribute to uh, greenhouse gas emissions, the, the pie chart here does a pretty good job of summarizing. So about half of our home's energy use goes to heating and cooling. And then there's also significant fractions uh, that go towards lighting, heating water, and then also electricity for our appliances and our other electronics. So by reducing the amount of energy that we need to put into heating, cooling, and running our electronics and appliances, we can reduce our carbon footprint. And while uh, things like putting solar panels on your house can be pretty daunting and not everyone's house is well suited or maybe not everyone is ready to make that kind of investment, doing things to improve your home energy efficiency is quite cheap uh, and is frequently fast to do and also has a pretty fast payback time. Uh, so these are really good things, I think, when people really want to start to you know, improve their lifestyle and reduce their carbon footprint, doing things like changing your diet and improving your home energy efficiency are some really nice ways to start. It also can make your house feel more livable. If it's less drafty, uh, it's, it's more airtight and more energy efficient. So today I'll talk about uh, heating and air conditioning systems, ways to seal the building envelope, thinking about appliances and lighting. And then at the end, we will talk about how do you get help uh, making sense of all this, figuring out how to prioritize, and in some cases, even getting help to pay for it. Okay, so in addition to reducing our carbon footprint by reducing our energy use, we also reduce our electricity bills. Uh, so the payback times of retrofitting or weatherization type of jobs around the house are frequently on the order of one to 10 years. We've heard a lot recently about infrastructure, and I think it's really important that we think about infrastructure as an investment and not a cost. And when we think about our buildings around the United States, a $270 billion investment would return about a trillion dollars in energy savings over the next 10 years. So that's not just our own homes, but also commercial and institutional type of buildings. From personal experience, uh, our own family did a, a little home energy audit and replacing light bulbs was a really effective thing for us to do. Uh, so when we bought the house, it had an amazing amount of recessed lighting. We have 64 recessed lights in the house. And by switching those from incandescents to LEDs, we were able to save 30% our, on our electricity bill just by changing out the lights. Uh, so there's some pretty basic things that we can all do to make a difference in a hurry. Uh, and one way that you can kind of keep track of how you're doing is just to look at your utility bill. So your Pico bill, for example, helps you to track your energy usage on a monthly and yearly basis. So here's an example bill. Uh, there is a blue line here, which is at the lowest uh, month of, of any energy use. So this was in April, uh, which is a pretty nice weather type of month when you're not doing any heating or air conditioning, but you do have some base load for running your appliances, your electronics, uh, hot water, things like this potentially. Okay, so uh, anything above this blue line then tends to be things like heating and air conditioning in the winter or the summer months. Okay, so you can use the, your bill to help you keep track of how you're doing, see if you've made improvements in reducing your energy consumption after you make some of these changes. Okay, so half of that pie chart at the beginning was on heating and cooling. That's where our biggest potential for impact is. 
So the picture at the right shows an infrared image of a home, and we can see in these kind of brighter areas where a lot of the heat is being lost. So sometimes, you know, at the corners between different building materials or through windows, for example. Okay, so uh, before you start even going and, and changing things out, you can just think about your own behaviors at home. So uh, this costs nothing to change, uh, but in, in the winter, for example, you might choose to not heat your house quite as much, and you could instead wear sweaters or fleeces at home. Uh, or in the summertime, instead of cooling it so, so cool, uh, maybe you can have a slightly higher set point for your temperature and just place fans in the room that you happen to be in. Fans are very low energy devices. You can also think about doing things like not heating and cooling when you're not home. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is probably with either a programmable thermostat or a smart thermostat. Uh, so, you know, things like Nest or Ecobee smart thermostats cost on the order of $200. Uh, but depending on your current habits, you can pretty quickly recover those costs by reducing your energy consumption. Uh, likewise, you can try to seal the building envelope. Okay, so uh, sealing the building envelope and not heating or cooling when you're not home are two ways that you can reduce your energy consumption because it's wasteful to condition air that then leaks out of the house or does not directly go to making you feel more comfortable. A couple of the ways you might think about doing this are to use insulation or use double pane windows. You can also think about other things you might do around the house, uh, things like using a tankless water heater to reduce the amount of uh, latent water that's just sitting around hot, uh, or using shade trees to block some of the heat from hitting your house in the first place. So some quick things uh, that you can do to think about building envelope and insulation uh, are kind of indicated by the picture on this slide. So we all know that heat rises, and if you are, for example, in the winter heating your house, heat from that second floor can rise up into the attic. Okay, so you're not living in the attic, you don't want the heat up there, you want the heat to stay where you are. So one easy thing that you can do is to make sure that you have a sufficiently thick layer of insulation on the floor of your attic. Another thing that you can do is to make sure that you don't have gaps, okay, so that you have good seals around your windows and doors. Uh, and there's some really easy and cheap things you can do for this. Uh, so things like caulk, if you have a, a pretty narrow gap. Uh, or spray foam insulation. These are both things you can get at the hardware store for a couple of dollars, go spend a couple hours and you can significantly reduce gaps. You can also use weather stripping uh, on doors, for example. Double pane windows are much more efficient at uh, eliminating heat transfer than a single pane window. And also using insulation, both in your walls and on the floor of the attic to make sure that we are not conditioning air that escapes from the house. Okay, so everything there is just behavioral or very simple changes, but we can also think about the equipment that we use for heating and air conditioning. It's important you wanna keep your equipment well-maintained. Okay, so just like you do routine maintenance on your car, you should also do this uh, for your home HVAC system. You wanna avoid leaky ducts. You should replace your air filters regularly so the pump doesn't have to work so hard. When it's time to change out equipment, you can think about moving to more energy efficient models. You can also think about moving uh, from gas furnaces to a high efficiency electric heat pump. This can help to reduce your carbon footprint, especially if you're using clean electricity. So Peter will talk more about clean electricity uh, in the next talk, uh, but this is also something that's quite easy to switch to, okay? Uh, in terms of other possible heating sources, fuel oil uh, and, and propane, these are pretty undesirable ways to heat your house. So natural gas is better than those and going to electric is, is even better than that. Okay, so we can think about using energy efficient appliances, not just for HVAC systems, but also everything else, our refrigerators and dishwashers and, and washer dryer for clothing. And if you're looking at appliances, the Energy Star uh, indication is a good way to know, you know whether that appliance is gonna be pretty efficient. So you can go to their website. Pico also does a lot of work uh, to try to help its customers be more energy efficient. Okay, so utility companies have a mandate to try to help their customers to reduce their energy consumption. 
Uh, so they have a lot of useful suggestions on their website. Uh, one thing that a lot of people have is a second refrigerator. Uh, and a lot of times these are old and not filled very much. And these are uh, really quite large energy hogs. So if you can avoid second refrigerators, especially old ones, uh, that will definitely benefit uh, the environment as well as your electricity bill. Another is using efficient LED lighting. Okay, so I mentioned that this works really well for our family. LEDs are light emitting diodes. It's just a different way of producing light, uh, but it is about 10 times more efficient than incandescent bulbs and about twice as efficient as compact fluorescents. So you can produce more light with less electricity with LEDs and the bulbs last longer. Uh, so between those two things, they typically give about 10 to 30% return on investment for switching to LED bulbs. Okay, and this is as simple as going to the hardware store, buying some light bulbs and installing them. So it's, it's quite easy. So we've given a bunch of different ideas in terms of insulation, appliances, lighting, and you know, how do you make sense of them all or decide which ones you should do first? There are pretty well-organized ways of going through and doing a home energy audit to reduce your carbon footprint. And you can do this either as a DIY kind of project or with a professional. So if you are interested in doing it yourself, but you want a little bit of guidance, this website is from the Department of Energy. And they give some indications of what you should look for as you're going through your house uh, for quick and easy and cheap fixes that could save significant energy and money. You can also do a professional assessment. There's a bunch of different sources for, for getting these, uh, but one is just through Pico. So the normal price is $49, but through the end of April, they're having a, a half price deal. So for under $25, you can get a professional to come uh, walk through your house for an hour or two and point out to you what would be the most cost effective ways that you can improve your energy efficiency, and then you can go out and do those projects, either on your own or with a professional, depending on what they are. There are a number of other ways your utility company can also help. Okay, so if you go to Pico Ways to Save for Your Home, they talk about doing these energy assessments. They also talk about different opportunities for equipment rebates when you're buying appliances. Uh, discounts on LEDs when you're buying lighting and so forth. So I would encourage you to take a look around the Pico site and see if they have some ideas that would be useful to you. They also have these kinds of tools and calculators uh, where you can compare, for example, how much uh, money would you save if you chose different thermostat settings. So you just put in some basic information about your house size and how you typically control the temperature. And then how much would you save if your set point was two degrees different, for example? And a bunch of other things related to uh, water heaters, natural gas, heat pumps, and so forth. There is assistance available if um, this is something uh, that maybe is difficult for you on current budget. So the Community Action Agency of Delaware County is a great resource. Uh, and. It is serving people who qualify by various different metrics. Uh, so if you are um, involved in SSI or TAMF, or if your family size has maximum income uh, that fits this table on the right, you could qualify for free weatherization. Okay, so they will come in here, they will help you weatherize your home. That will make it uh, both more comfortable and reduce your electricity bills. And they also sometimes have uh, bill paying assistance as well. Okay, so if that's something you're interested in, you can go to this website uh, for CAADC or call their phone number. Okay, so I will stop there and allow some time for questions. And I'll just finish uh, on this website, which I have accidentally covered up uh, some of the links. Uh, so let me pause. Sorry about that. Um, and now I will reshare. Okay, so I'll, I'll finish here and leave these links up. And I think Joy is also going to put these into the chat for people who are attending live. And we'll just leave a few minutes for questions. Thank you, Jason. I guess I did put those in the chat. Um, does anybody have any questions? You can either type them in the chat or um, since we have a fairly small group, you can go ahead and unmute and ask them.
Okay, other than LEDs, how can people living in apartments reduce footprints? Yeah, so um, I guess what you would do depends on, uh, you know, if, if you're renting an apartment or um, if this is a, a situation where you, you uh, own your living space, you can do different things. Uh, you can do some pretty basic things like weather stripping, uh, and this could, if you have, you know, a door that is going to the outside, you could weather strip to reduce airflow. So if you can, as a general rule, uh, see the outside world from the inside through cracks, these are things that we should try to reduce. Or if you can just use your hand and feel the draft, there might be ways that you can try to seal that space. Uh, some people also recommend lighting a candle or an incense stick and just kind of walking around and putting it in different places and see which way the smoke is wafting. And that gives you some feel for whether there are uh, leaks that you can go ahead and seal. Um, so you may not be in an apartment, uh, you know, if you're renting, it might not be something where you would go out and change the appliances, but you certainly can do things like uh, changing the set points that you use for your temperature. Uh, so whether you're buying or renting, you can reduce your energy use. So in the summertime, instead of setting the temperature at 74, maybe you're willing to set it to 78 and use a box fan or something like that. So that's something that we typically do in our house. Or in the winter, maybe instead of heating it quite so much, just heat it to 68 and then wear warmer clothing. So there's a bunch of things like that that you can do that both reduce your energy consumption and also potentially reduce your energy bills. Thank you, Jason. Are there any other questions? Okay, 